To Thee we come, O Lord our God. Now, let us recite the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask for the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Let our prayer come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. The brightness of the sun is one time, the brightness of the moon another, and the brightness of the stars another, for star differs from star in brightness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have, Lord, have Lord, have Lord, have Lord, have Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of God. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. We see our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, you called your children to the delight of eternity. We thank you for the joys of this life and magnify your name for the hope that lies beyond. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. O oh, merciful God, as we listen to your holy word with willing hearts, grant that the word of Christ dwells in us richly, so that we may live in accordance with its holy word. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading for this morning's Holy Mass is from the book of Daniel. In those days, I, Daniel, heard this word of the Lord. At that time, there shall arise Michael, the great prince, guardian of your people, and it shall be a time unsurpassed in distress since nations began until that time. At that time, your people shall escape, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some shall live forever, others shall be in everlasting horror and disgrace. But the wise shall shine brightly, like the splendor of the firmament, and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm response is, you are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold first my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, shall, I shall not be disturbed. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices, and my body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You are my inheritance, O Lord. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul. Brothers and sisters, every priest stands daily in his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he is made perfect forever, those who are being consecrated. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. This is the word of the God. Thanks be to God. Blessed day by day be the Lord, who hears our burdens, God, who is our salvation. God is saving God for us, Lord, 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 Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. For at that time there will be great tribulation, <coughs> such as has not been since the beginning of the world, nor ever will be. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. Learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branch becomes tender and sprouts leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know he is near at the gates. Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning to all of you. I'm not going to be speaking long. Last night was a little rough um, case of food poisoning. And, and so uh, today will not be a two hour sermon. Uh, but I did want to share with you a few words. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. These words are taken from the Gospel, according to St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Next week will be the last Sunday in Cycle B of the liturgical year. The new cycle will begin the following week with the first Sunday of Advent. <clears throat> Throughout the entire year, a story is told. A story of hope, of longing, a story of fulfillment, of the prophets who spoke of a Messiah. We learned about the life and times and ministry of Jesus the Christ. And we've also read of the teachings of St. Paul and St. Peter and James and John. But it's interesting that today the gospel is a little different. It talks about 
the end times. Society, or the vast majority of society, want to hear only what they want to hear. But the truth and the reality is that there will be a time in which life as we know it will come to an end. And it will not be a rogue asteroid that hits the earth or a gamma ray that strikes the earth or a super volcano that will cause nuclear winter, but it will be as it is known in Christianity as the last judgment and the last tribulation. Jesus talked about the end times. And according to our faith, we talk about Jesus coming a second time. All these things are being placed in today's readings. First, from the prophet Daniel, through the writings of St. Paul, and finally, in the Gospel according to St. Mark. Next week, we will celebrate Christ the King. And it is celebrated not only in our church and not only in the Roman Catholic Church, but the Anglican Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Methodist Church, and many, many other Christian denominations. For the past few weeks, we did not talk of Christ the King, and it is only fitting that the last Sunday of the liturgical year talks of Christ as the King who sits at the right hand of God as we proclaim in our faith the Nicene Creed. But it's interesting if you can recall for the past couple of weeks, Jesus is talked about not as a king, but as the high priest. Year after year, the high priest would be chosen and many, many times by Rome itself, and they would set up a false high priest who was there to offer the sacrifice of animals for the atonement of man. But we have read over the past few weeks where Jesus Christ is the eternal and the only high priest who offered one sacrifice once and for all, eternal. And by offering that sacrifice of himself upon the cross, the gates of heaven has been opened to all who seek and who trust in God and live by his word. I'd like to share with you just a couple of scripture passages of the importance of the word of God. We know that Jesus, at his temptation, following his baptism, when the devil appeared unto him, the tempter said, change these stones into bread, and what did Jesus say? say Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so what is the word of God, and what are its promises, and what are the benefits of studying and living by the Word of God. We read in Holy Scripture that the Word of God is the book of all ages. In Psalm 119, 89, we read, Your Word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. The Word of God is food for our souls. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. We know that the Word of God is divinely inspired. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, we read, All Scripture is God-breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training 
in all righteousness. We read and we understand that the Word of God is promised to be written onto the hearts of the believers, the righteous. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6, we read, And the Lord God said, These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. As we heard so eloquently sung in our choir, we realize and we know that the Word of God furnishes light upon the darkness in one's life. Psalm 119, 105, which is one of my favorite. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. The word of God, my brothers and sisters, is also a saving power in one's life. We read Paul, who speaks in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. The Word of God not only is a saving power, but it is also a power that purifies one's life. Jesus, in his gathering at the Last Supper, speaking his final words before his arrest, in John 17, 17, we read where Jesus said, Sanctify them in truth. Your word, O Lord, is truth. And finally, my brothers and sisters, the word of God not only is a saving power, a purifying power, power but it also probes one's very existence. In St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12, we read, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we gather here on Sundays and holy days of obligation to hear the Word of God. Let that Word of God come within your lives, within your hearts, that you might live by it and find your own salvation. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. 
as we look not to what is seen, but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation may they whose memories we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven we ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen pray my brothers and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, through this holy oblation, draw us closer to you day by day until at last we behold you face to face through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, grant that these gifts offered in obedience to your holy word regenerate us in spirit and awaken us to a new life in you. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, O powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you 
thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and to all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world to come. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy. defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer who offer up to you the sacrifice and praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May their remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family. And so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that assault moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. Like manner, after supper, 
taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remem remembrance of this Christ your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer you to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar, into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Christ our Lord, Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father. Give us. 
Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
receive the body and the blood of Christ. 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 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may give recompense according to what he or she did in the body, whether good or evil. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Father, we bless and extol your name, for you have given us a share of the inheritance of Christ. Through this Eucharist, may we one day stand in peace and safety before your judgment seat. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
let us pray. Omnipotent Father, having heard the word of God and receiving the body and blood of Christ, strengthen us that we become more zealous in the work of your holy church as we follow the voice of your incarnate word, Jesus Christ. Help us bring his gospel of love and peace to this world. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Sacrifices offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity, and grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. participate, excuse me, uh, personal uh, prayer and devotion. Um, I added a couple extra things to the bulletin, um, an opening hymn and also personal prayer. Um, please come and share it in, in that moment, wherever you are, to set 15 minutes aside to, to pray and to offer prayer unto Almighty God. I bring to mind some of the announcements. Um, tomorrow, 7 o'clock, monthly meeting of the parish committee. On Tuesday, please be aware that I am going to be traveling to Woonsocket, Rhode Island for a meeting of the Eastern Diocesan Liturgical Commission. I will be returning late in the afternoon, early evening. On Wednesday is the Solemnity of the Presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mother. Nine o'clock, nine o'clock Mass will be celebrated here. On Thursday, nine o'clock, um, a Mass of Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, 
time in which we give God our thanks. On Saturday, 8 o'clock, there will be the third session of Pierogi. I was told yesterday. Actually, no, not Yes, please. We are going to be making the Saturdays. We're going to change the schedule. We were going to make them Tuesday, the 27th, but we're going to be doing it the 24th Saturday. So if you can come on Saturday, please let Peg or myself know. Okay. Yes, you were right. I'm glad you. We were going to do them the 27th, though. So that was as long as a holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. But we haven't got the help to do it. So we're going to try to do it Saturday. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. I bring to mind next Sunday, of course, Christ the King, Holy Mass at 9 o'clock, um, Mass of the Eucharist. Uh, a couple of quick announcements in the bulletin. We had someone that uh, came to work on our organ. There were some problems, and hopefully all of the problems have been resolved. Uh, waiting to hear from our insurance company about our stained glass window. Hopefully I will be able to give an update tomorrow at the parish uh, committee meeting. Uh, pierogi. Uh, pierogi will be on sale. Uh, as well as Lumpke. So please see Alice. Um, I don't think Peg's in church today, so if you want pierogi, please. Um, I also added in a couple of other things about the annual Christmas party on December 9th. Please consider attending. Also, on Thanksgiving Day, I have included a Thanksgiving Day prayer that can be said at your table or ad lib uh, to give God thanks for all the blessings and I also put in uh, just a, a short short article about the um, the remembrance of all those people in California that have lost their lives their homes everything I just read today before coming over to church <coughs> church that the um, the victims who have died is rising again, and I read that there are now over 1,200 that are still missing. So, um, something to be thankful for when you sit down at your table and you have a home, and you have food, and you have friends and family that will be sharing, that there will be many, many people who will not have the kind of thanksgiving that we will have. And if possible, please consider uh, contributing to the aid and to the assistance of all those who have been affected. Affected. So in our prayers today, let us remember those who lost their lives as well as those who are homeless and will be spending this Thanksgiving in a shelter or even in a tent. Are there any other announcements? Are there any intentions? Then let us go before the altar of God, offer a final prayer of not only thanksgiving, but also our intentions for the living as well as for the deceased. May God be with all of us until we meet again. In the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of our faithful departed, as well as for all the victims who have lost their lives during the California wildfires. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord.
may they rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.